Hi there and welcome to today's vlog. Thanks so much for joining me. Now if you're a regular viewer of uh, my vlogs you might uh, notice that there's a new picture up on the wall behind me over my uh, that shoulder there and it's uh, a picture of uh, it's a print of it's a limited edition print of Boothbury Park which is the former home of Hull City Association Football Club my hometown team and uh, as I was as we've been continuing to do some sorting out I came across that picture which is now put up in my study but also uh, three uh, season ticket cards uh, for the time when I was uh, a season ticket holder there. Uh, one goes back to 1979-80 season which is uh, not long after Sue and I got married so she was what a good girl she was to let me go to football every fortnight and then uh, I've also found a couple of cards from later 99-2000 season which was uh, actually the last the beginning of that season was the last one uh, that they spent at Boothbury Park before moving to the new stadium but not only did I find my own ticket but also my late brother Phil so that's uh, bring back some really happy memories uh, anyway enough of that we live in uh, stormy times don't we uncertain times there was news uh, yesterday of uh, the possibility of a, a vaccine that seems to be uh, I think it said 90% effective in uh, giving someone an immunity, at least for a time being. I don't know how long it might last against uh, COVID-19. The uns uh, uncertain thing at the moment is whether that will prevent that person who's been vaccinated from passing it on to someone else. So that's uh, a hopeful sign. Uh, still some uh, further research, no doubt, and checks to be done. But it's a possibility that that may be of great benefit but uh, it's not certain and we live in uncertain times don't we when the future seems to be so unclear we we don't know uh, how this thing's going to pan out if you remember right back in uh, March when we went into the first lockdown and then uh, after a few months the rate of uh, passing on had, had, had dropped the number of people in hospital the number of people with the virus everything had dropped and we thought maybe we're getting somewhere and then it all really its ugly head again and we're back in uh, lockdown again. So and I think a lot of people really cope with the first lockdown and it was unusual and perhaps we're just really determined. But now a lot of people are tired and I must admit that for those who are working on the front line in the health service, in the care services and other areas, they must be really, really worn out. We need to pray for them and, and support them in whatever way we can. Now, I heard it said recently that one of the verses uh, from the Bible that's been quoted uh, perhaps more often than any other in recent times is that well-known verse in the book of the prophecy of Jeremiah. It comes in the 29th chapter of Jeremiah and it's verse 11 where God says this, For I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Sue and I were out walking uh, on uh, Sunday and uh, we came to this certain place and there's this big uh, building and it looked a bit ramshackled and as we just stood there looking, this elderly gentleman came towards us. Apparently he lives there and he was saying that uh, the property had been vandalised by some young people and he was bemoaning the state of society and, uh, and he's saying you know what hope is there for the future and I was trying to encourage him a little bit and we need to pray that good will happen and not bad and he, he seemed to be quite doubtful about that if we lose hope you know we're in a, in a bad place aren't we but uh, this verse is quoted because of the encouragement it gives that whatever's happening whatever things seem God has a plan for the future God offers us hope and uh, that verse is it, that's probably why it's quoted uh, often these days but one of the things we sometimes don't pick up or don't uh, focus on is the context in which the verse appears in Jeremiah this comes at a time when the people of Israel are in exile they've been forcibly removed from their homeland and taken to a foreign land 
And so you can imagine that they're really struggling. And there's a bit of a battle going on between Jeremiah, who's God's prophet, and other prophets who are what we might call false prophets. They're uh, proclaiming words that are not from God. And so one particular prophet is a man called uh, Hananiah. And Hananiah prophesies that, uh, don't, he says, don't worry, everybody, uh, this will all this problem we're in now it'll soon be over we'll be able to return back to uh, to, to our homeland to, to to Jerusalem and everything will be fine the treasures will be returned the, the people will be returned so don't worry about it let's just uh, hang on for a moment don't bother about uh, where you are because we'll be back soon uh, and Jeremiah listens to this and he says well that's wonderful if only it were true but of course, uh, Jeremiah knows it's not true because uh, he says to the people, uh, you're going to be here sometime uh, longer. So um, how, how, how to respond in the context of, of being in exile, being in a, a bad place, struggling with life when it's going to go on for some time? We don't know how long it will be before this COVID-19 season uh, draws to a close if it will in some way that we, we, we were able to return to a, an at least an element of normality we don't know how long how long it will be before that happens so what how do we live in the meantime well listen to these words um from jeremiah uh, to the people in the context he's saying look we're going to be here another 70 years this is, this is what he says to them build homes plan to stay, plant gardens, eat the fruit you produce, marry and have children, then find spouses for them, have many grandchildren, multiply, do not dwindle away, work for the peace and prosperity of Babylon, that's the place where they've been taken into exile, pray to the Lord for that city where you are held captive, for if Babylon has peace, so have you. So Jeremiah is saying, look, we're going to be here for a long time. So uh, let's uh, pray for God to prosper the place where we are, the city where we live in, the town we live in. Let's build uh, lives. Let's be positive about our daily life and experience. And surely that is a message for us today, wherever we are, whatever situation we find ourselves in. Pray for God's blessing. And incidentally, uh, Friday the 13th of uh, November is, a, is there's been a call to a national day of prayer so I hope that if you listen to this before uh, the 13th that you, you, you will join in some way on Friday the 13th particularly with many many others to pray for our nation to pray for God to move in our nation not only about the Covid situation but there'll be a, a turning again to God a, a renewal in our national life. So important that we bring these things before God. And then Jeremiah goes on with this. The truth is that you will be in Babylon for 70 years. But then, says God, I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised. I will bring you home again. So there is hope down the line, even though in the meantime, there are things that must be done. For I, this is where God says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days, when you pray, I will listen. So as we come to God in prayer, as we pray for our nation, for our families, for our communities, God hears our prayer. He says, if you look for me in earnest, you will find me when you seek me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. So we're called to pray for our nation. We're called to pray that God will prosper our nation, our communities, our towns, our cities, our villages, uh, our streets, the streets where we live. And we're called to do what we can to be a blessing to those around us. So, yes, we're in uh, tough times. We're in uncertain times in many ways. But God is in the midst. 
God has a plan and a purpose for my life, for your life, for our nation's life. And we are called to be a people of prayer. We're called to seek God, to draw near to him, to walk in his way. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that we are not left adrift. We thank you that in the midst of uncertain times, we have a certainty in your love and faithfulness. We pray that we may be truly people of prayer, people of faith, people who seek blessing for our communities. Lord, draw us near to yourself. Help us to live as those who trust in you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today.